It's letter time, it's letter time, dear notes. Hi, love the channel, watched every episode. Thanks, man. Learned about a lot of new music, which is great. Thanks a lot about that. I have a question. Will you ever do a video about how you listen slash approach new music all the time? For some reason, most of the time when I hear new music, I don't actually like it and I don't know why. After a while, it grows on me and now I cannot imagine my life without these albums. Is it the same for you? I'd love to know. Anyways, keep the good work. Cheers, Ben from Israel. Thanks, Ben. Uh, great to hear from you. Uh, yeah, so this will be the video for that. <laughs> so I listen to music in a number of different ways. The first is the discovery and how I go about finding new music. I keep a little bit of like a record and an ear to the ground in terms of those bands that I am interested in. So I follow a lot of the bands on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and these are bands that I really, really enjoy. And there's a lot of them, right? And most of the bands nowadays have social media presence, so they usually let us know uh, what's in the works. So that's one way. Another way is through you guys, uh, the viewers here, you usually recommend some really, really good stuff and that generally comes about as well. Same with a lot of the different uh, labels. Um, the two that I follow pretty heavily are like Inside Out, we have K-Scope, you know, there's a lot of really prominent, especially progressive rock um, stuff, um, and they usually dish out a lot as well. Uh, same with forums that I go on quite a bit. I never really add anything. I usually just kind of snoop and uh, stalk. Um, creep, I think is another word for that. Uh, and then finally, it's just through the Prog Archives. Uh, Prog Archives regularly updates new artists, new albums that are going to be featured. And that's generally how I find out about new music. Every once in a while, I do find that uh, either YouTube or Spotify is recommending me new things, but I don't really find music through those. I usually get notified that a band that I've already enjoyed is releasing something new. Like the bulk of it is actually through Prog Archives when I find that a band is getting a lot of recognition. Uh, they're getting a lot of high stars. I'll usually go and check them out. Uh, and same with bands that have been recommended to me quite heavily through my own YouTube channel. Uh, so that's kind of how I find new music and how I find new artists. In terms of actually sitting down and listening to them, so there are the artists and albums that are that I am not familiar with, and then albums and artists that I am familiar with, because there are two different ways that I approach that. So for me, I have a lot of spare time in terms of getting to work, because I have about a two and a bit hour commute every day, just one way. So that gives me about four and a half, five hours of downtime where I have nothing to do but listen to music. I usually have a book or a graphic novel or something just to keep my mind occupied because the first couple of listens, it's very like ground level. It's very surface level. Uh, I'm only getting like the taste of it. I'm getting the flavors of it. I'm getting, is this album more of a heavy album? Is it more of an atmospheric album? Is it more of an intimate album? And I usually listen to an album two or three times with this kind of baseline, surface level, not getting too deep, just getting the general impression of the album overall. Unless this is an, uh, a band that I genuinely love. And what I'll actually do for that is before, maybe in about an hour or two hours before I am ready to go to bed, I'll turn off all the lights, I'll lie in my bed, and I'll just have the album on, and I'll listen to it once or twice all the way through with no distractions at all. The latest Dream Theater album, the latest Taken album, the latest uh, Neil Morse album, the latest Devin Townsend album. So these albums, I shut off all other stimulus and just sat down and listened to them. But other albums such as, say, the new Lonely Robot album, the new King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, uh, the new Mute Gods, the new Jordan Rudis, album. These ones were the ones that I would listen to on my commute to work with a lot of other distractions kind of going on just so I could get a general flavor. So after I get the general flavor, that's when I'll kind of put a little bit more effort into it. I'll listen out and I'll keep my ear out for anything that catches my attention. Uh, and honestly, if it doesn't catch my attention, half the time I'll kind of stop there. Uh, and this is why for certain albums, I don't end up doing a review for. So bands like uh, the Queensryche latest album, the Soen album, I just didn't really have anything to say. So with these albums, if I don't really have anything to say after about the third or fourth time, and I've really kind of like sat down and listened to them, and that's a capital L, like active listening. And that's the difference between a passive listening and an active listening. For those albums that I do have something to talk about, then I'll, you know, 
actually write some notes. I'll have like bullet points of I like this song, I like this feeling, I like this atmosphere. My opinions of the album will change. And that happened with me with um, a lot of albums. Uh, the latest Taken album, Vector, uh, I went from loving it to being lukewarm about it to really, really enjoying it. And I pay attention to that as well because that is that helps me formulate a full opinion of the album as well. How do I enjoy this album through different moods? Because I might not like a certain album in a certain mood. And I also see where my opinions have changed and I try to bring that about within my review itself. So that's about it in terms of new music, new artists, new albums uh, that I get presented with. Uh, generally, unless it's an album that really hits me hard, I'll usually only spend about two, maybe three weeks with an album before I shelve it. And unless there's something that maybe it was an album that I didn't like, or maybe it was an album that I really did like, or it was an album that I was interested in, like they had a really interesting thing going on it. I usually won't return to it. Like I won't return to an album if after three weeks it just does nothing for me. That brings me into the second part of this video. And that's for music that I'm already very familiar with. So for music that I'm already familiar with, I'll generally pick it up in physical format. And that's generally how I love to listen to music. I love to listen to it on vinyl, uh, which is why I have so many behind me, uh, because I just love the aesthetics of it. I love the physical item itself. I love plunking it down onto my turntable. The actual system that I have here is a little bit of a Frankensteinian setup. <laughs> um, I've got my turntable, which is connected into my uh, amplifier receiver because it's not really a receiver because it doesn't have like a, a radio in it. And I think in order to be called a receiver, it has to have a radio. And then from there, uh, I run that to pretty good Logitech computer speakers with a subwoofer that's meant for gaming uh, because I live on a budget because I spend so much on the, the music behind me. Uh, so that is connected into the receiver, but because the computer speakers only have a male aux out uh, and the it's a NAD, uh, the NAD receiver only has um, the traditional speaker with like the direct wires, the yellow, white, red, blue kind of prong thingies. I had to buy an adapter for the prongs into a cord for a aux, but the problem is the aux ends in a male. So I have a male meeting a male. And unfortunately, these guys are hetero, which I mean, they need to get over themselves. They need to be able to sleep together. So uh, in order to make their relationship co uh, cohabitable and copacetic, I had to buy an adapter piece so that the male and the male can meet in the middle. That's generally how I really, really like to enjoy music uh, is this physical format on my couch, just laying it wash over me. And I also have like playlists because that's another thing that I love to do. I love to make playlists, have songs kind of interact with one another and see what comes about. But at this point, I think I'm getting away from the question because the main question was, how do I listen to music? And that's generally how I listen to it. Physical format, on the couch, vinyl, or on my commute. I have my phone, Spotify, headphones. So that's about it for this. Um, what did you guys think? How do you listen to music? How do you get over those humps of if an album isn't quite doing it for you, do you shelve it and come back to it later? That is another thing that I do. Um, I'll wait until I'm in a little bit of a different mood or a mindset to see if that's the issue. Because there have been albums where I just didn't like when I first listened to it. I put it on the shelf, revisited it, and really enjoyed it. And there are other albums where I just did not enjoy it at all. Put it on the shelf. Everybody's been gushing about it. Picked it back up. Tried it again and still didn't feel anything. So... Anyway, that's mine. What's yours? Let me know by commenting down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.